Neuroscience is cool, as it helps us understand how the brain, which is the most complex organ in the human body, works. The brain produces our everyday thoughts, actions, memories, feelings, and experiences. This jelly-like mass of tissue, weighing in at around 3 pounds, contains billions of nerve cells called neurons. The most fascinating function, however, is how the brain consolidates, retrieves, and forms all sorts of memories. Let's take a deeper look into the neuroscience of memory through the example of Henry Malayson. As a child, Henry Malayson, more commonly known as H.M., fractured his cranium. He developed a severe form of epilepsy where he constantly had epileptic seizures and often fainted. Because traditional therapies didn't work, H.M. turned to Dr. Scoble, an audacious neurosurgeon. H.M. underwent an experimental surgery where the medial regions of his temporal lobe were removed. This was because seizures originate in this part of the brain. After the surgery, H.M. was relieved of his seizures and his personality was completely intact. However, H.M. was left with severe amnesia. He was only able to remember events for a matter of minutes. For example, five minutes after having lunch, he asked, well, where's lunch? But H.M. did remember his childhood very well. In order to understand the scientific concept of HM surgery, let's take a closer look at the brain. Initially, scientists believed that memories, both short-term and long-term, were processed and stored jointly throughout the brain. But, after further studies on HM's brain and his behaviors, neuroscientists learned that the medial temporal region is connected to many cortical areas throughout the brain. These cortical areas are responsible for many functions from processing vision to comprehending language. The medial temporal lobe includes the hippocampus, which we now know as the consolidator and retriever of memories. If the hippocampus were to be omitted from the brain, its connections with areas of the cerebral cortex would be cut off, thus diminishing the ability to form long-term memories. Now, let's look at the facets of long-term memory. First, let's go on a bike ride. Now, how was I able to ride my bike? Well, this is all a part of my procedural memory, which is learned from skilled activities such as juggling a soccer ball, riding a bike, or signing a signature. Our basal ganglia and our cerebellum are in charge of these learned habits or skilled movements. Now, let's relate this procedural memory to HM. Brenda Milner, a PhD student who studied HM, asked him to draw a third star in between two concentric stars while looking at his pencil and paper through a mirror. Like most people, HM failed the first few times he tried, but after a couple trials, he was able to successfully draw the third star. This was strange because HM had no recollection of any previously failed attempts. Milner discovered a clear distinction between motor tasks, which build procedural memory, versus learned and experienced informational memory. Declarative memory can be divided into two subdivisions, episodic memory and semantic memory. Imagine writing a history essay. All the names, dates, and general facts you recall are a part of your semantic memory. This means your semantic memory is in charge of factual information. On the other hand, episodic memory consists of information about specific events, of where they happened, when they happened, and what happened during that time. Just like that seventh birthday you had at the park on a Sunday afternoon where you just got one present. And when you open that present, a jack-in-the-box popped right out and scared the daylights out of you. This sensory information is sent up your brainstem to your thalamus, which acts as a relay station. This information is distributed throughout your cortical areas and your prefrontal cortex, which altogether process this information. This experience is sent to your hippocampus, which turns this experience into a long-term memory if the stimulation is strong enough. In this case, it was. Now, every time you see a jack-in-the-box, a gift, or even during your future birthdays, you will constantly be reminded of this scary moment when you open the present. The constant stimulation of this memory causes this memory to be solidified in your brain. In other words, on a molecular level, this persistent change in synapses, the connections between neurons, is what solidifies all this information. This process is called LTP, or long-term potentiation, where synapses become stronger after frequent activation. All in all, we can conclude that the memory deficits experienced by HM were due to the lack of his hippocampus, which caused him to be a slave of the present.